Hey guys, today we're taking a look at the Sigma 10 to 20 millimeter F4 to F5.6 variable aperture ultra wide angle lens. This is a zoom lens that covers the widest of wide angles. Without being a fisheye, straight lines presumably remain straight with this lens. Now Sigma's released two versions of this lens. There's a newer version of the lens that's a f3.5 aperture. So if you have the choice between the two at the same price, I would go for the newer version. I, however, have had my Sigma 10 to 20 millimeter for more than five years. I think it's very comparable in build and performance to the newer lens with the notable exception, the newer lens has the wider and brighter aperture. Now, if you're a Nikon DX shooter, as of this moment, there aren't really any good ultra wide primes that are native to the DX range. There is a fisheye from Nikon, but if you're gonna go ultra wide, you're probably gonna get one of these zooms. I ended up going with the Sigma and I've actually never regretted it. In five years, I've gotten a lot of use out of this lens. Now this has the HSM focus motor inside the lens. That means it will focus on all of the modern Nikon camera bodies. Even with the older DX camera bodies like a D40, this lens will autofocus. So that's a nice feature, the built-in focus motor. This does not have optical image stabilization built in, which really is not a problem at all because when you're talking about a lens this wide, you don't really need optical image stabilization. It's a nice to have, it is not a need to have feature. The exterior surface of the lens is covered with rubber and plastic. The rubber has a slightly strange texture to it. It's sort of a fuzzy rubber. Uh, it's a nice enough finish, but it's different from the first party Nikkor lenses. But I have to say that over several years of rough and tumble use, the lens has held up pretty well. There are a couple of mild scuff marks on it, but nothing of concern. This lens was made in Japan, which is usually a sign of quality. It has a 77 millimeter front filter thread. So if you wanna add a neutral density filter to it, you can easily do so. Sigma includes a pedal type lens hood, which does a pretty good job at reducing flare. And Sigma also includes a really nice thickly padded vinyl lens case. And the lens case for this lens even has a belt loop. It's a pretty chunky piece of glass. It weighs a little bit more than a pound. So uh, there's pretty much no way your camera's gonna be pocketable with this thing attached to the end of it. The zoom range again goes from 10 to 20 millimeters. Pretty much it's going from ultra wide to wide. And the length of the lens does not change when you manually adjust focus. It does change slightly by just a couple of millimeters when you go from 10 to 20 millimeters. On a DX camera, this focal length range is not 10 to 20 millimeters, but with the crop factor, it is 15 to 30 millimeters, which is still incredibly wide. I'm typically shooting this lens at the 10 millimeter mark, and it's just super wide. Wide angle lenses are not just useful for getting a lot into the frame of the photo, they're really useful for portraying a sense of depth. So you can really capture a kind of a three dimensional space in a two dimensional photograph, if you know what I mean. This lens can be more difficult to use than it might at first appear. If you're using a wide angle lens to simply take it all in, it can actually be kind of boring because if you're not careful, the wide angle lens can separate the viewer from the subject. So the trick is usually involving some sort of foreground activity or subject and contrasting that with the backdrop, which might be architecture or landscape. 
This lens is a little bit more challenging to use than it may at first appear, but once you practice with it a little bit, you'll get some really, really interesting shots. There's a focal distance meter at the top that uh, clearly marks infinity focus, and you can go from close focus to infinity with about a third of a turn of the lens. I found this lens to be useful in all sorts of environments. It's great for landscape photography. It's great for astrophotography. I personally think it's fun with architecture, although there is some distortion with this lens. I think if you are the type of demanding architecture photographer who is really turned off by distortion, then this may not be the lens for you. It's great for real estate photography. If you're wanting to photograph a studio apartment somewhere and make it look like the Taj Mahal, you need this sort of 10 millimeter lens on your camera. Yes, this lens is sharp in the center of the frame at all apertures. You can shoot it wide open and expect the center of your photos to be satisfyingly sharp. However, the corner performance is not quite as consistent. Wide open, it's not gonna be terribly sharp in the corners. So if you want sharp photos, corner to corner, you need to stop it down to probably at least F8. Sometimes I shoot at F11 with this lens. Now, because this lens is so wide at the 10 millimeter end, you really don't want to photograph people with this lens unless they are in the center of the frame. The closer you get to the edge of the frame, the more extreme distortion there will be. Now, it can create some really interesting effects. You can make people <laughs> look really long and skinny, or uh, in horizontal orientation, you can make people look uh, short and fat, which is not typically a look uh, that most people will be going for. Never photograph your wife towards the edge of this lens. It could cause marital difficulties. You know, they say that you date your camera bodies, but you marry your lenses. If you're gonna marry an ultra wide angle lens, I can recommend the Sigma 10 to 20 millimeter. It's a good value, I mean, for the price and considering that it auto focuses with all Nikon DX bodies. If you're interested in reading more reviews of this lens, be sure to click the link on the YouTube description for this video, and it will take you to the relevant Amazon page where you can see what others have to say. If you like our little channel here on YouTube, please be sure to subscribe to loloho.photo. Uh, we're gonna be reviewing a lot more gear in the future, and subscriptions really help uh, keep the videos coming. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Until next time, I'm Sean with Loloho. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you disliked it, give it a thumbs down. Feel free to leave a comment. And of course, don't forget to subscribe.